changing the position of the few coals in the fireplace to try to extract some warmth. She struck me as too harsh to be reduced to this little measure. Ivan Tajon, meet the Maz. Here's the American producer of our same plays. Hello there, I greeted her. <laughs> Hello there. She exaggerated the imitated my Pennsylvania accent. And from that moment on, she called me Hello There <laughs> as my nickname, as in, is Hello There coming to tea? <laughs> and also, is the big yak in town? <laughs> so she said, you're the big yak. The balance has been going on about. <laughs> We were doing that Abbey play would depress the bejigs of Sabria. The writers will see, I don't think. Who's going to pay into that? You want me advice, child? There's a lot more money in comedy than tragedy. Everyone's looking for the laugh. Who wants misery? A horn, a horn, a horn. In this depressing life, child, there's enough crosses to bear without paying good hair and earn money into the tragical theater. Nah, she's producing this for her doctorate in the States. Oh, there's nothing but big ideas in the States, to be sure, where the big money is, the land of opportunity. I mean, tell you, our theater now is NG. No good. Desperation, child. Didn't I make John's father, Lord have mercy on give up the theater before I agree to marry him? As God is me judge, he might have been known by all as the funniest comic in Dublin, Dick Malloy, touring the Empire Circuit with the best, even with Charlie Chaplin. But I had him settle down to the dead. Not this benign to Drake and Sean. Those were the dairy days. There follows the John Malloy monologue, some of it. Cal says, I was born in 1929, but our house was always 1912. Like the 1418 war hadn't happened yet. It was always full of people. A dairy shop with you in the city. You are never lonely in our house. The shop opened at half past seven in the morning and didn't close till nine at night, seven days a week. We'd a half a day at Christmas after second delivery. Every day began the same, waiting for breakfast at the kitchen range. There'd be a rattle of thunder, the house would shake, and we knew Bogey had arrived with a Clydesdale and float on the cobblestones outside. Lily, the cook, would sell breakfast and sing Deep and Dumb and Dumb all the time she did it. He called her Deep and Dying behind her back, but she always sang in the Irish. She worked for Granny, but Manny said you had to watch her as she smoked tea in a clay pot, and tea was rationed then. Lily would say, Let's just say this, the boss and bogey are at it again, and we run on the passage and listen through the banisters. We'd see Bogey's big boots with the leather laces, his blue stockings, and mouse skin knee breeches, and hear him shouting, I want me money now. If I was to die tonight, it's the like I myself would be drinking it in the morning. Then Daddy would grumble and give him three half a crowns and say, Bogey, you drive a hard bargain. You'll exit your wages every day before you even earn them. There's Oliver St. John Goldberty waiting for his bottlenecks. A hard man to drive a bargain, Bowie. Yet when we were sick, Bowie always brought us cowslips. And when Mammy was sick, he brought her primroses. Poor old Bowie with a soft hat like a crash from her. The only man who could milk the oldest cow we ever owned. I liked Bowie. Every Patrick's Day, when the cows went out to the fields, Bogie stood you up in front of the big milk float and let you hold the reins and drive the Clydesdale all the way. Patrick's Day was great. But Sunday in the winter was best of all, for then the drawing room was open, and Mary would play the piano, 
Daddy would say he was good at that. Of course, he'd been on the stage for 20 years and played with Mary Lloyd, Lizzo Titch, and Ella Shields. He used to say, no, 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 it's not, oh, Johnny, how you can love it. Oh, oh, John. That's the way she sang when I played with her. She made it famous 20 years ago. I loved when Daddy sang. It was so different from hearing him say, yes, Miss Stella. I'll have Jenny run over with it straight away. Eggs treatments, cream treatments, bed, bread, top table. Half a pint of milk to pen, family. That'll be nine pence to be valuing all together. And say to Auntie Marriott, switch us on another song, Mary. Switch us on another song. She wasn't respectable, my sister would say, because she drank bottles of stuff. We'd run out of the room and laugh on the landing because she got red when she sang and the music made her cry. She laughed when she cried and cried when she laughed. Her favorite song was, Oh my lily born, why are you pine? <laughs> we didn't think it was any good. <laughs> so we went downstairs to Lily to cook. If she wasn't singing an Irish, Jenny would be playing the accordion. That was better. And when we went back upstairs, Margaret had stopped. That was better still. Uncle Mike, when he ran out of stuff, he'd be sent for half a dozen and get tuppence off the job. And maybe a drunken old man in the pub would give you a penny as well. I love Sundays. I used to wish every day was Patrick's Day or Sunday. We didn't like Christmas Day because all the staff was off and we had to work too hard. Still, it was only once a year. And very soon it would be Patrick's Day and the cows would be going out. Then it would be calving time. And he'd carry the calves back in the car with their heads in the room. Maybe the calf would be named after, after <coughs> him. But when Daddy sold them, you didn't speak to him for two days. Pretty soon it would be chestnut time. Then the cows would come home, and the barn would be full. You could play jumps and slides forever, and go to the Guinness Brewery for the hot wash the winter feed. Coming home, you sat up on the shaft of a big barrel on two wheels with no seat pulled by the glide stand. He went slowly over the cobbles, pulling a cat that smelled of fresh bread, and leaned your back against the hot wash and waited for them to drink their portion on a cold winter's morning. It was funny. It was lovely. It was nearly always something. Then one morning, Bodie said, Jesus, Mary and Joseph boss, the foot and mouth disease is in the city. And Daddy shouted, a bloody pack of foreign spies have thrown chemicals down on the concrete in the cattle markets, and the cows will walk into every farm in Ireland before the week is out. Daddy and Bodie left with the clients. They are going at full gallop. When they appeared, there were two policemen by their sides. Daddy just said, we can't go nearly there anymore. The next day, my brother and I reached from school to see the cattle being shot in the Phoenix Park. There were thousands of cows there. Then we saw Bobby and followed him. He was searching for the oldest cow we ever owned. Suddenly, we saw him take a gun from one of the soldiers and shoot hard and said, The soldiers let him do it as we left the park. We knew we'd never see our cows again or the oldest cow we ever owned. But what we didn't know was that we would never hear the piano in the drawing room on a Sunday afternoon or go out with the cows to the fields on a Patrick's Day. And Bobby would never ever bring us cows when we were sick ever, ever again. Christmas on an island. What are you doing for the halsey bullet? You're not staying in dirty up double like your peaceful manly and her chubby wounds. Nora from her riders to the sea cats cried, I know. Come on now to go away. Spend the Christmas with me family. Daddy's a sing scholar. He loved to be Jack. I thought, wonderful Irish hospitality. And I said, I'll write my back out, hustling like I had enjoyed in September. John was incredulous. Are you mad? In this weather, there'll be no little house in Ireland by Santa's night. 